Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Chester and I were about 30 miles from Dodge when we ran into the Buffalo Hunters camp. We'd been holed up for two days in a deserted sod hut, taking cover from one of the worst blizzards in years. But it was over now, and a warm, dry Chinook blew out of the west, down off the Rockies and across the prairie into Kansas. It was Chester who saw the camp first, a pile of buffalo hides half covered by snow, and the skeleton of a wagon, its canvas torn and shredded by the blizzard. The camp was silent as we rode up. We got on. They ain't nary a soul here, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, maybe the men got caught out on the prairie when the blizzard hit and couldn't get back. It sure does look that way. I don't know how that team is still alive with nothing but that wagon for protection. They don't look none too lively. Uh, you sure can't blame them. Get your hands up. What? Both of you. What? You better do what the old man says, Chester. He was hiding in the wagon. Come over here. Closer. This your camp, mister? Of course it's my camp. Now you two drop them guns. Now we got our hands up. Is not enough? You do what I say. I ain't taking no chances. I ain't going to get left here again. Left? You're going to hitch up that team, and you're going to take me into Dodge. You ain't running off like Jed Larner. Who's Jed Larner? He's my skinner. Oh, why did he leave you? Well, he seen that blizzard coming, and he didn't want to take any chances, so he rode off. He's probably been in Dodge all the time, warm and cozy. Oh, why didn't you go with him? I twisted my leg and my foot so I can't ride a horse, that's why. Larner figured driving the wagon would be too slow. You mean he left you here to freeze? Yeah, and I'll kill him when I find him. And I'll kill you if you don't drive me to Dodge. Now, here, he's a U.S. Marshal, mister. He ain't gonna leave you out here. Uh, Marshal? Yeah, that's right. Now, why don't you put down that rifle and tell us who you are? Well, all right. My name's Ira Puckett, Marshal. I'm usually up north following the Republican herd, but I come south this year. I'm getting old, and I thought it'd be warmer down here. You sure made a mistake about that, didn't you? You'll get me into Dodge, won't you? Sure, of course we will. Foot I trusted, I don't feel nothing in it. Must be froze. Huh? Well, it could be. I'll kill Jed Lorner for this. You forget about that, Pocket. I'm not taking you back to Dodge just so you can hang. I'll forget it. Till I find him. People everywhere are finding that Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Yes, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. For the more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. And Chesterfield, made with Accuray, is more perfectly packed than any cigarette could ever be before. Firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying to the taste, 
An Accuray Chesterfield has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. So remember, Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Buy Chesterfield. Mild. Yet they satisfy. The most. Hey, Doc. Oh, he'll be all right, Matt. In time. Well, then his foot wasn't so bad after all, huh? He didn't have much foot left when I got through with him. Oh. But he'll be able to walk with a cane. But his buffalo hunting days are over. How does he know that? Mm-hmm. I told him. Ira Puckett's a proud man, Matt. A little too proud. Oh, what do you mean? Well, what he hated most about this Jed Larner leaving him on the prairie wasn't the fact that he might have died, but that he was helpless. A man like Puckett can't stand being helpless. Yeah, I see. So now, all crippled up, he, he's a better man, Matt. Well, he'll get over it, Doc. A man will get used to most anything in time. <laughs> I've got my doubts about Puckett, though. Well, you know that ornery old goat? He won't even admit how old he is. Oh, how old would you guess, Doc? Oh, he's past 70 anyway. Uh, he's in the back there if you want to see him. All right. I'll come with you. Oh, hello, Parker. Marshal. How you feeling? Doc, tell you what he done to me? Uh, yeah. He ruined my foot. Oh, I... Oh, I saved your life, Puckett. I ain't sure I'm grateful, Doc. Uh, you're gonna be all right, Puckett. You're gonna be able to get around. Yeah, like old woman. What am I gonna do for a living? I ain't one of you city people. I live off the country. I always have. I'm a man, not a dude. You'll get used to town life. And you'll find men here, too. <laughs> what kind of men? Walking around all slickered up, parting the hair in the middle, bound to the ladies. Ain't one of them could do half the things I've done. Why, well, I was living with Comanches when most of them was sniveling in their mother's aprons. Yeah, I know. But you'll find something to do. I'll help you. You will, eh? Well, sure. Then help me find Jed Larner. Bring him in here so that I can kill him with my bare hands. What does Larner look like, Bucket? You know, he's tall, black hair, got a big scar running across one eye and halfway down his right cheek. All right, I'll try to find him. And if I do, I'll run him out of town before you get to him. <laughs> so, can't even trust you, can I? Not when you want to murder a man. I told you I didn't bring you in so you could hang. <laughs> The next few weeks, I kept a sharp eye out for Chet Larner, but he must have headed for some other part of the country. Anyway, he never showed up in Dodge. Well, time passed, and Ira Puckett was able to get around a little, first with the help of crutches, and then finally with a cane. But it was obvious his hunting days were over, and that alone seemed to shame him. Then one night, his pride really got a blow, I was at the Long Branch having a beer with Kitty when it happened. Oh, this is a great way to start the new year, Matt. Uh, what do you mean, Kitty? Well, oh, last year I was hoping maybe I'd be in San Francisco by now. Oh? Well, you never told me. <laughs> what would you have done about it? <laughs> oh, nothing, I guess. Hmm. Uh, why San Francisco? No blizzards, no dust... No cowboys. Uh-huh. Yeah, but they got fog. Yeah. And all those sailors and miners aren't any gentler than these cowboys, you know. Well, I know. But imagine going to dinner in a carriage, eating off a tablecloth, dancing on a hardwood floor. <laughs> You're spoiled, Kitty. Well, now, how could I got spoiled? Here? In Dodge City? <laughs> uh, save your money. You'll get to California someday. Yeah, sure. If I walk. Well, a lot of people have gone that way. Who do you think I am, Sacagawea? <laughs> ah, there was a woman. Yeah. You know, I always... What's the matter, Matt? That man at the bar, he just turned around. Which man? The one with a scar down his cheek. 
I'll be back, Kitty. Good evening, Marshal. Evening. What are you staring at me for? Your name's Jed Larner. And if it is, how long you been in town, Larner? About an hour. Something wrong, Marshal? You remember the big blizzard we had? Hmm. Who don't? We all do, I guess. Especially Ira Puckett. What? He didn't die, Larner. Well, that's fine. I went back looking for him. I wondered where he got to. Yeah, sure you did. Well, it's true. Pockets here in Dodge, Larner. He is? And if he finds you, he'll kill you. But he isn't going to find you because you're leaving right now. And don't show up around here again. Now, wait, Mark. I you can't can... arrest you. I can't put you in jail. But I tell you what I can do. What? Suppose I just let everybody here know that you're the man who ran off and left Ira Puckett to die. No. You know something? They'd tear you apart, Larner. They'd set you on fire. Don't say nothing, Marshal. Don't tell him. I'll leave. I'll leave right now. Well, you got rid of him in a hurry. I saved him from being shot and Ira Puckett from hanging for it, Kitty. Well, that was Jed Larner. Uh-huh. He's the one that ought to hang. Yeah, he didn't mean to kill the old man, Kitty. What's the difference? Well, legally, there's some. Enough to give Ira his foot back? <sighs> You're sure hard to argue with, Kitty. Why? Because I think straight? <laughs> Let's uh, talk about San Francisco, huh? I've changed my mind. I think I'll go to New York. Oh? No. Marshal Dillon. Cairo Puckett, man. Yeah. He looks awful mad. That's... Good thing he isn't armed. Now he can always find a gun, Kitty. You, you done it, Marshal. It was you, wasn't it? You saw Judd Larner. Huh? Jumped on his horse and rode out of town before I could stop him. And I had to stand there and watch. I didn't even have a rock to throw at him. Why'd you do it, Marshal? To save you from hanging, huh? Well, I'd rather hang and live this way. I wasn't born to become my helpless old man. The least you could have done was let me fight my own battle like I always did out on the plane. You took my manhood away from me, Marshal. You're living in town now, Ira, among people. Why don't you get used to it? All right. All right. All right, I will. I'll live like you town people. Fine. Then why don't you start by getting yourself a job? I'm going to. I sure am. And it's going to pay me a lot of money, too. What do you mean by that? you find out, Marshal. When it's too late. This is Jack Webb. I suppose most of you have made your New Year's resolutions. I guess with most of us, that implies some kind of a change. Well, beginning with this brand new year, we've made a few changes in our Dragnet television show. I like to think the most important is what we call the Dragnet New Look. In our brand new series, we'll show for the very first time the new Los Angeles Police Administration building, the first of its kind in the world. But the biggest change of all is our new television time, one half hour earlier. Now, speaking of a change... Here's a great suggestion for 1956. Change to milder, better-tasting Chesterfields. My cigarette. Make it yours. I think this little jingle of ours sums up our case for Chesterfield very nicely. Put a smile in your smoke and just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy.
It's a nice morning, ain't it, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, thanks to that wind we had last night. Well, it kept me awake. Uh, all night, Chester? Well, no, sir, I wouldn't say that. About 15 minutes. Hey, look over there by the bank, Mr. Dillon. Ain't that Ira Puckett? Uh, yeah. That's the first time he's had his team and wagon out. Where you reckon he's going? Right now, he's gone into the bank. Well, what's he carrying that shotgun for? He can't do no hunting in the bank. Yes, he can, Chester. Come on. Mr. Dillon, you don't mean to say old Puckett's going to hold that bank up. He said last night he's going to start living like town people and get a job and make a lot of money. This could be his idea of how to do it. You sure couldn't have no other reason to carry that shotgun in there. You going in after him, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Well, he's got a shotgun. I know. Look, Chester, take his team and wagon off somewhere. Uh, lead him around back of the bank, huh? Out of sight. Maybe we can handle this without a shooter. All right, sir. Hurry it up, Chester. He's coming out. I'm long gone, Mr. Dillon. Marshal. Come on out, Puckett. I'm not stopping you. You better not try it. I can shoot with one hand, Marshal. Yeah, sure. Don't you try to follow me, Nick. Hey, wait a minute. Wait. Where's my wagon? Where's my team? You're in a bad fix, Puckett. Somebody stole them. I can't get away without my team. No, you can't, Puckett. So you might as well give up. You've done it. You're behind this, Marshal. You gonna shoot me? Well, why shouldn't I? Because you're in enough trouble already. And shooting me won't help a bit. You're trapped, Puckett, and there isn't a thing you can do about it. Now, you use your head. Uh, all right. Here. Here's your money. Now, you bring my outfit back. I ain't going to jail, Marshal. It's like I said, Puckett. Shooting me isn't going to help you. And I'm not going to do a thing about your outfit. You think you outsmarted me, don't you? Give it up, Puckett. You're licked. Yeah, well, I... No. Oh, I can't shoot you, Marshal. Here. Here, take the gun. Good. I'm nothing but a helpless old fool. Can't even rob a bank proper. I'm not sure you really wanted to, Puckett. What? All you wanted was to prove something about that manhood you think has been taken away from you. But you sure picked a foolish way to do it. Yeah, I guess it did. My goodness, I thought he wouldn't never give up, Mr. Dillon. He didn't have much choice, Chester. I went in the back way and told the people in the bank to keep out of the way. Want me to take him to jail? Oh, no, no. No, no, I, I can't stand jail. Please, Marshal. Lock him up, Chester. I'll return this money and have a talk with Mr. Botkin. I'll be over later. I told you to lock him up, Chester. Well, I started to, Mr. Dillon, but I just couldn't stand the look on him when I got him in the cell. I... I... Ira, you know, it seems to me everybody treats you pretty well. Yeah, everybody but Jed Larner. That's true. But Chester and I brought you in. Doc saved your life. I kept you from hanging, and if I hadn't outsmarted you at the bank, you'd probably be lying dead somewhere now. You know, it seems to me everybody's gone to a lot of trouble for an old man full of a lot of foolish pride. What do you think? I, I've been thinking, Marshal. Sitting here thinking. You know what? You're right. But it's too late now. No, it isn't, I don't. What? I explained everything to Mr. Bodkin at the bank, and he's willing to drop any charges against you. But on one condition. What's that? Now, to be honest with you, it was my idea, but Mr. Bodkin agreed. You get a job here and quit being so doggone ornery. Otherwise, you're going to go to jail. Oh, what could I do with this crippled foot? Well, seeing you're so handy with a shotgun, I think Jim Buck might hire you to ride messenger on the stage. You think so? Well, he told me he would. You... 
You you went and saw him? And it doesn't take any walk in, Ira. So, uh, how about it, huh? Well, I, I never had a job like that. But a uh, man's got to make a change once in a while, lady. And, and it'll sure be a good way to start the new year. moment, our star, William Conrad. People everywhere are finding that Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Yes, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. For the more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. And Chesterfield, made with Accuray, is more perfectly packed than any cigarette could ever be before. Firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying to the taste. And Accuray Chesterfield has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. So remember, Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Buy Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> You know, out on the high plains, they used to have a saying, never argue with a mule, a cook, or a horse and buggy doctor. Well, next week, an Easterner who never heard that saying comes to Dodge, and uh, he makes the mistake of fighting with the wrong people. He nearly dies as a result of it. But uh, that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody and James Nusser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M, superior taste and filter. L and M, America's best filter tip cigarette. Be sure and listen to another transcribed story of the Old West on Gunsmoke next week at this same time. <laughs>